Hey everybody, it's Jason Baja here. You guys know what time it is? Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click, click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. So, over to the point. Number of people sent messages yesterday saying, Jason, could you check out Jeff Nippert's Wonder at Max's? What do you think about it? Could you assess it? Uh, could you give a fair assessment? Some people are like, could you rip on it? No, I'm not going to rip on him, guys. We don't need to rip on people who are attempting to promote actual strength. Right? We don't need to rip on that. That's a good thing. And I think the squat, bench, and deadlift, and this is the reason I like powerlifting, is a good objective measure of overall strength. It is. It's a good measure of strength. The only time people say it isn't are people who are either generally really weak or people who are bad at one of those lifts. And we're all bad at at least one of those lifts unless you're just an amazing genetic freak. Right? We're all bad at at least one. So that being said, they are a great measure because they, between the three of those lifts, they utilize almost every muscle in the body. Right? If you have any major muscle weakness other than maybe the biceps, it is going to make you a lot worse at at least one of those three lifts. Right? They account for each other's leverages. They account for each other's leverages. Now, obviously, guys with shorter legs are going to tend to do really, really well in general at, at the big three, and that's just a reality. That's why we have weight classes. Right? Weight classes are height classes. Everyone understands that. Hopefully, you understand that. If you don't, you need to get up to speed with the data, the research, uh, things every coach in the world knows, what the exercise science researchers know. Weight classes are height classes in disguise. It's what they are. Jeff's a shorter guy. That gives him certain advantages. But it also measures everything from because there's a grip test in there. Grip strength is part of your overall strength. That's part of your averaged out strength measurement. Right? There's a grip test. There's an upper body dominant lift. There's a lower body dominant lift. If you have long arms, you'll be better at deadlifting and worse at benching. If you have short arms, you'll be better at benching and worse at deadlifting, as we see with Jeff. Right? He's a perfect example of that. Textbook example of that. Bad deadlifter, good bencher. Just short arms. They tend to balance each other out. They balance out your structure. And you have to be good at a little bit of everything to get a good total. That's why it works and it's standardized. Everyone has to follow the same rules to compare people, so therefore it's a great metric of determining strength. It's actually really reasonable when you, you understand it from that perspective. So, and none of them are highly technical lifts. They really aren't. They're not that technical, even though the bench press arguably can be. It's also the least important of the three. Right? It adds the least to your total, and it's the most technical. This makes it overall a good measure of strength. Over to the point. Uh, looking at Jeff's lifts, we'll get to the deadlift last. Let's start with the squat, because it goes squat, bench, deadlift. Uh, his squat is about what I expected, because I remember a while back he was putting up rep work, and people were telling me, no, 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 he's a mid-four, he's a 450, he's a 500 squatter. I was watching his rep work. He's not. He's 400 squatter. I actually, I think I said maybe high 300s, maybe 400, 415 at the absolute, absolute most based upon his rep work. I said that a couple months back when he put up some other stuff when it came up. Pretty much what he hit. Now, when I saw the one back angle at first, I thought he missed depth on that 405 squat because he hit a 405 squat. I thought he missed depth. However, I turned to the side because I was actually at, not home when I watched this, but I had a laptop with me. I slowed everything down. Well, I had some downtime last night on my way home. Uh, got on my laptop, watched it, and I slowed it down and looked. He did hit depth on the squat, just barely. Now, we don't take points away for that. Why? Because there's no bonus points. When you're determining someone's comparing different people's strength level, you just need an objective metric. In powerlifting, for example, we use hitting parallel. And it's a good comparison because if everyone has to do the same basic range of motion in terms of your joint angles, it's a valid comparison from person to person. You don't get bonus points for going deeper. You could argue, hey, if I squat four inches below depth, I bet you my parallel squat is even higher. And it probably is, but if you don't measure it, you don't know. He barely hit depth. And I'm talking, had he been a half inch higher, I would have red lighted that in a comp. He barely got it, but he did get it. Therefore, you, we could argue that compared to other people's parallel squat, you've got a 405. Um, one of the things he did note, though, is that 
is what I'm going to disagree with. And even people he's in circles with and talks to and his friends with will disagree with this. He keeps saying he gets about 10% out of going from high bar to low bar. That's not normal. He can say that he feels that that's the case. That isn't normal. Even Greg Knuckles, if you guys go look at Greg Knuckles, who he's friends with, who he cites all the time, says 3 to 5% for people who get anything at all. Uh, I don't know if I could put mine in percentages. I get about 10 pounds. However, the problems associated with low bar don't make it worth it to me. It's not worth the 10 pounds I sometimes get out of it for all the different problems. I think low bar has its own recovery issues. I think it has its own inflammation issues for people's shoulders, biceps, stuff like that. Uh, I'm just not a fan of the low bar squat. Not a fan of it. Not going to promote it. Uh, plenty of world champions think that it's silly. Okay? Plenty of world champion coaches think it's silly. Point of contention. Uh, you don't get 10% out of the low bar. You don't. If he, if he does, then he's a, a, a weird anomaly in the data. Uh, so his estimate could be off a little bit. But it gives him some wiggle room. So he says he's going to work on bringing his squat up from there. So, okay, fair enough. But we kind of come to the point when you compare his bench to his squat. He does kind of show that he's a bit of an upper body bro. Because that's not proportionate. Because we can argue about leverages on the deadlift. Arm length, right? That, that's fair. Arm length doesn't negatively affect your squat. Having short legs gives you an advantage on the squat. Jeff is way below average height. He's a good five, six, six inches shorter than me. And I actually have decent levers for the squat, right? I'm actually re reasonably well built on the squat. There's a reason I squat over 500, which is not controversial. It's up. I've done it recently on camera. So there's a reason I squat over 500. I am built reasonably well to squat. He has those same advantages to another level. Right? He's got even shorter legs. He's got short legs. He should, he should be able to squat with a wide variety of stances and do very well. Um, he's disproportionately strong. Jeff, you got to work on your legs more. You need more real leg work. you got to have it. That is, that is holding your squat back. You need more leg work. So, holding him back. Go over to his bench. Bench was good. His bench is good. I mean, again, body weight, size, lever lengths, whatever. Yes, he is built to bench because he's got the really short arms. He is a short guy with short arms, reasonably lean. I mean, that's that's what you want in a bench champion. He's got, basically, for his category, I think he's pretty much at, close to, if not at an elite bench for his, his weight. He hit a 350. Now, there were some, some arguments in there, and he pointed out stuff. As um, far as different federations meet rules go, uh, only the IPF requires heels flat, right? Only the IPF requires heels flat. Also, if you're competing at the international level in the IPF, though, they will random off-season drug test you, right? You go into the Olympic-style drug testing, it would be inappropriate for Jeff to do that, right? Be inappropriate. So I would say, since Jeff, you, you personally know it would be inappropriate for you to compete in the IPF, you don't need to worry about their heels flat rules. You don't need to worry about it. Do whatever you need to do. The main thing is that once you start, you can't move your feet again. Um, so what you're looking at is your heels can be up off the floor, but you can't move your foot position itself in the middle of the lift, right? Once you get that, start lowering that bar, you're in position, you lower the bar till it's locked back out, you can't shift your feet. So if you're, ball, if you're on the balls of your feet, even if your heels are coming up and down a little bit, that's fine for most federations, but the feet can't move. You can't move where they're positioned at or, or break them off the floor or shift them to the side. They can't slide across the floor. Um, as far as the sinking goes, the sinking is fine. Um, I don't know why anyone thinks that you're not allowed to sink the bar. You can sink the bar all the way into your chest. Plenty of world record holders do. And then when they tell you to press, you press it up. He is right. Once you're given a press command, you can't sink the bar further. Right? It's almost like you can't do a double bounce type thing either. But you sink the bar and then press. You're allowed to sink it in your chest. That's totally legal. Uh, as far as his bench goes, there's no criticism. He's, he's very good on the bench. He's strong on the bench. That is his by far his best lift, and he is largely an upper body bro um, compared to relative strength and size through his physique. Uh, but there's nothing really critical to say about the bench. He's good to go there, and it was a good bench. I mean, I'd need to go back and look at the feet closer because I didn't slow it down and look uh, like with the meat judge. 
Uh, as far as the buck coming off the bench, we can't tell from that angle. I honestly couldn't tell you if it broke off the bench. But as a meat judge, this is how this works. If you can't confirm, if you're unsure if a rule was broken, you're supposed to pass it. Okay, meaning because if I couldn't see at that angle, then I'm not supposed to judge it unless I clearly know. If you see a lot of times, there have been other people on here who are even friends of his who they clearly broke off the bench. Okay, we could call it even from that side angle. His, I wouldn't be able to call it without looking down from the side. That's why you have a judge looking there. So I, I would pass it. Uh, overall, though, I mean, his bench would pass. You're good to go. He's got a 350 bench. Uh, the deadlift. The deadlift. He can say what he wants about the straps. Let's just call it what it is. If you can't deadlift that weight without straps on, you don't have that deadlift. It's not a 458 or 485. If you pull 485, sumo. All right, number of problems there. Uh, number of problems there. Jeff already has a leverage advantage of being a shorter guy. Now, he can talk about, I've got really short arms. It hurts me on the deadlift. Bro, you're like five foot four, And I believe that's what he said the census has him at. So at five foot four, you've got short legs. That more than makes up for the arms. Okay, that more than makes up for the arm length difference. You're still closer to the floor than most people. You're still going to have a shorter range of motion than an average height guy, even if they have longer arms than you. Okay, you can't use that one. It's not going to work. Uh, he already slowly inched out range of motion, and this is what he talked about on the sumo. And he's actually right. Uh, I'm going to agree with him. I pull sumo and conventional both. I do more sumo than anything. Uh, they work the same muscles. All the data suggests they work the same muscles. Uh, we can make a good argument for benefits of the sumo from a training volume situation. I pull sumo. I'm fine with sumo. I think people should pull sumo. Not necessarily novice lifters. That's a whole other topic. But non-novice lifters, absolutely. Pull sumo. Uh, so, over to the point. The hardest part with the sumo is popping it off the floor. It tends to be slow off the floor and then it speeds up unless you're really bad. And he was able to lock it just fine. Again, there's been other YouTubers this has come up who they said, oh, I pulled this sumo with straps. They failed the lockout. They weren't strong enough to pull it. Uh, okay, number one, he had little thin mats on the floor. All right, you're already dealing with the sumo. The sumo is hardest right off the floor. It is. It, it, popping it off the floor is the slowest part. All right, you already had a little bit of an advantage. Tiny little mats. The straps let you hold it lower down also. You shorten range of motion on your sumo when you strap up. Okay, it is not the same movement. So even though it might seem very nuanced, you're, tr you're using two different methods to trim out little tiny bits of range of motion out of the hardest part. Also, the grip strength issue. If you're having to strap up and you're still coming off the floor that slow on the sumo, you probably can't pull that weight. In other words, because of if I'm objectively looking, straps sitting on the mats, all of that, if he were to pull that out on the floor and try to either mix grip it or hook grip it, he would not have gotten that lift. I don't think he could have done the 485. Just my opinion. And that was the thing. A bunch of people in his comment section, because I looked, were like, oh, you should have went for 500. You could have got 500. He can't pull 500 right now. I'm not saying with some proper training he couldn't pull 500. I don't think if Jeff walked over in any sort of meat legal environment at this moment today and he walked over and tried to pull 500, I don't think he would get it. Okay? I don't think he would get it. He's too slow off the floor with his sumo with the 485 with straps. If he were to go to a mixed grip, slide those mats off and do it straight off the floor, his 500 would stick. I think when he goes to pull 500, it would either stick on the floor and not move or he would lose his grip purchase within the first few inches and have to let go and drop it or put it right back down. It would only come a couple inches off the floor or it would stick on the floor. That's what would happen. And that's where he's at. I mean, he, he is probably, if he again loses his straps, works on his grip, I think he's back where he was. He's like, oh, that's a, a lifetime PR for me. You're, you're a 450s deadlifter, Jeff. You're still where you were. Um, work on it. Fix it. Get your grip sorted because let's come back over to the point. If you don't have a, any grip strength, you don't have any grip strength, that is a strength limit. You can't claim that you're all around top to bottom strong if you can't grip anything. Okay? And you can argue that the hook grip hurts. Well, yes, the hook grip hurts. I hook grip. 
you know what? I hook grip because I think it's smart. I agree with rip toe. Intelligent people pull with a hook grip. There's a learning curve. Yes, it hurts. It takes time. Because you've already been deadlifting. You didn't start with a hook grip early on. It takes time to learn to do it. Okay? If you're worried about the asymmetry on mixed grip, you need to learn to alternate. Then, if you, if you don't want to use a hook grip, then you need to learn to alternate the mixed grip back and forth every rep, every set, to deal with the asymmetry. Um, but I would push him in the direction of the hook grip. But whatever he does, he has to get his grip sorted out because to claim that you have a certain strength level is just simply not true. It's simply not true because you don't. Because you've got a major muscle function, in this case grip, for whatever reason, he can argue as to why. He can argue as to why it's a limiting factor. But it is a limiting factor. It is a limiting factor for you. You can't deadlift that weight. And it's just that simple. And that's just as calling it objectively, nothing personal. Uh, it is what it is. But, you know, uh, that's reality. So that's my assessment. People ask, hey, could you break this down? Could you give your thoughts on it? Yeah, that's cool. I thought I would give just a fair assessment of his breakdown. Hey, people do it to me all the time. So I thought I would do it as people requested. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.